Hey folks, this is Kalani with patch 9.2 right around the corner. I figured it would be a great time to go over some things I would recommend you get done before the patch goes live and some things which I personally don't think are worth your time. With so many changes coming in this patch and so many new systems being introduced, it's important to know what's going to get easier, what's going to get harder and what's going to be left by the wayside when patch 9.2 releases. So let's take a look at everything to do before patch 9.2 and what to ignore. Before we jump in, be sure to hit up that like button and subscribe so you never miss another video. Instead of starting with a long list of chores or activities to get done, let's take a look at some things that I would suggest you don't do before 9.2. These could be things that are going to get much easier or maybe some activities which aren't really relevant at all in the new patch and therefore probably not worth spending your time on right now. To start with, do not put any effort into the Shards of Domination system. You might be thinking, well which part? Getting them? Upgrading them? Figuring out Domination gear? Don't bother with any of it. Shards of Domination are not going to work in any important part of patch 9.2. They will still work in the Moor, which we will almost never be visiting. They will still work in Corthia, which again, we will almost never be visiting. And then they still work in Torghast. Torghast might be the only place it's still somewhat worth using them for if you already have them in high item level gear and you also don't plan on upgrading that gear in the new patch. With how easy it is to gear up in patch 9.2 I would say any item level advancements you make will overshadow the power level of Shards of Domination in Torghast so there's almost zero reason to ever think about Shards of Domination system ever again in Shadowlands. They don't work in the new raid, they won't work in dungeons, they don't work in PvP, they won't work work in the new zone, it's literally a dead system when the patch arrives, so don't waste any of your time or effort thinking about getting shards, upgrading shards or equipping shards. In fact, try your absolute hardest to forget they ever existed. We're moving on to tier sets again which will hopefully feel much better. Another very important thing I would encourage you to not spend much time on is legendary crafting, specifically crafting covenant legendary items. You may have heard that patch 9.2 will allow you to equip two legendary effects at the same time, and that's true. You may have also heard that one of those legendaries has to be your covenant legendary, so we don't really have any choice about what our second legendary is going to be. That is also true. So you might question why I would tell you not to craft these covenant legendaries if they're going to be useful and kind of require in the new patch. Well, the way in which equipping two legendaries will work means you actually can't use any of your covenant legendaries that you craft right now. Like, at all. They become entirely worthless in the new patch as soon as you get your double legendary unlocked. That's because the second legendary is actually a brand new legendary power which initially will only be available on a belt that you earn from the story campaign in the new patch. Later on you can unlock a memory for the rune carbon that lets you craft your second legendary effect on any gear slot, but the important part here is only this legendary belt or the effect can be equipped as your second legendary. That second legendary will always use your currently active Covenant Legendary effect, which makes any and all specifically crafted Covenant Legendaries worthless. It might sound kind of weird, but it boils down to, you will never use a Covenant Legendary that you have crafted before 9.2 after you get your Legendary belt, so don't waste your Soul Ash, Soul Cinders or Gold on crafting them right now if it's not an effect you already have and use. I also wouldn't really spend much time on the conduit system before patch 9.2 goes live. Upgrading your conduits can be useful and provide you with some good bonuses to damage, healing or tankiness, whatever you might need for your class, but it's going to be significantly easier to collect and upgrade conduits in 9.2. For starters, the new reputation in 9.2 will offer up an item at Friendly that lets you learn every single conduit for your class and upgrade it to item level 226. So that sets absolutely everyone on an even playing field no matter what your conduit progress has been up until this point and it's great catch catch up for your alts. There's also going to be another item later on that lets you learn all conduits and upgrades them to 278, which is the max item level of conduits in the new patch, but that requires some hefty end game progression to obtain. If you can obtain it though, you will be done with conduits for the rest of the Shadowlands expansion, so doing any upgrading right now would be a bit of a waste. 
We might also see an item in between these two levels to upgrade all conduits to item level 252. That item is in the game files on the PTR, but we haven't actually seen it in game just yet, so we'll have to wait and see if it actually makes it in. In addition to these big sweeping catch up items, all of the main sources of conduits will have their item level bumped up as well. So the new raid is going to be dropping conduits at item level 252 on normal, up to 278 on mythic. Mythic dungeons should drop item level 236 conduits minimum, which will increase as you progress through higher and higher keystones. Pretty much anything you do to actually get conduits right now in game will reward you with much higher item level conduits for the exact same effort in 9.2, so don't worry too much about them. I would say if you come across some conduit upgrade items, you know, from tinkering about in Corthia for the last few weeks it's going to be relevant or whatever, they're still worth using, mainly because they don't have any other purpose, but I wouldn't actively go out of your way to upgrade your conduits before 9.2 releases. Which leads us into our next point. I also wouldn't really bother spending much time on your gear in general, especially for characters that you don't play very often. Gearing up in patch 9.2 is going to be significantly easier, both to catch up to a reasonable item level to progress through the zone and start the new gear grind over again, and just to gear up in general. There are so many different ways to gear up, with some pretty good options for getting higher item level gear, even if you don't do group content. The Cypher equipment system will allow you to gear up as you unlock new traits and talents in the Cypher of the first on system, there's a new catch up BOA token that will get you straight into a full set of item level 226 gear, and there's the sand worn relic gear vendor which has an almost full set of item level 246 gear, that one requires a bit of time investment but for all the solo players out there it's going to be absolutely great. Pretty much every source of gear is going to reward much higher item levels in patch 9.2 as well. Mythic Dungeons will start at item level 236 and just go up from there. The new raid drops 252 and 250 gear on normal difficulty, so again that's kind of the lowest item level you're going to get from the raid. Honor gear starts at item level 203 or 239 in PvP combat, and Conquest gear starts at item level 249 or 262 in PvP combat. The PvP gear only goes up from there as you upgrade it as well, so as you can see, we'll be chasing after much higher item level pieces in this patch in general, and it's going to be so easy to get some of these upgrades. We're also going to see the return of tier gear in patch 9.2, and with how these sets usually work, getting your 4 set bonus is going to be such a large increase in overall performance that it almost doesn't matter what item level gear you have right now. Getting your set bonus will take priority, so even if you're working on maxing out your item level in patch 9.1, you'll still end up replacing all of that gear, especially the tier gear slot, and with us being so close to the patch's release date, I really wouldn't stress too much about gearing up. Save all of that energy for the next gear grind in patch 9.2. Something else I wouldn't spend too much extra time on are the Covenant campaigns and the Corthia campaign storylines. This is going to be a bit of both sides though. You don't have to complete your Covenant campaign or the Corthia campaign to move forward into patch 9.2's content. You can start the quest that leads to Xerath Mortis without finishing those previous storylines. So if you don't really care about the ending of 9.1 and just want to go straight into 9.2, you can do that for the most part. However, it does seem like at least some progress is going to be required to move on to Xerath Mortis. With a brand new level 60 character, I had to unlock my Soulbinds properly by going over to my Sanctum and doing the little busy work over there, and I also had to unlock Corthia before the quest for Xerath Mortis appeared in Ouroboros. That's going to be super easy for anyone who has already completed those activities, even if you're playing on a new character, because both of those requirements have skips tied to them. You can just skip the Covenant stuff and then tell Bolvar you know about Corthia and skip over all of that as well, and then the quest with Xerath Mortis immediately pops up afterwards. But if you haven't played Shadowlands in a long time, it looks like you will at the very least have to unlock Corthia, do the scenario leading up to it, and the whole introduction questline. So if you haven't done that already because you're waiting for patch 9.2 to come back to the game, it might be worth resubbing a bit early and at least getting the Corthia intro out of the way, so you can then move into patch 9.2's content as smoothly as possible. Moving on, something I think absolutely everyone should get done before patch 9.2 is to get to renown 80 on at least one character, with any of your covenants really. A lot of very useful items and tools are locked behind renown 80 and you only have to get there with one of your covenants to get most of the good stuff. The big unlock is being able to swap your covenant with no cooldown, and that goes for any of your other characters. As soon as one character hits 80 with one covenant, any alt or character you have can freely swap between all of their covenants as often as they want. That is a massive quality of life change for every kind of player, so be sure to unlock it. 
You will also be able to purchase a Renown catch-up item after hitting Renown 80. You can find this on a vendor right next to the Ouroboros Flight Path Chap. The Broker Mark of Distinction will cost you 500 gold and will instantly put you at 40 Renown with your current Covenant. This item is BOA, so you can trade it to any of your alts and it can be used for any Covenant. What's great about this item is that when you use it to skip to 40 Renown, you also get all of the rewards from leveling up to 40 Renown, including 1000 Anima. If you use a token for all four covenants, that means you can get 4,000 anima pretty much instantly on new characters. That anima can be used to fuel that alt's covenant upgrades or cosmetic purchases or whatever else you might want, or you can use the anima transfer item to send it all to your main. Getting to 80 renown will also unlock every soulbind upgrade available, both in terms of the new traits towards the bottom of the trees as well as the upgraded conduit slots. There's no new renown grind in 9.2 either, so 80 will be the max for the rest of the expansion. Once it's done, it's done, and you don't don't have to worry about getting left behind again. If you want to go one step further than that, you can also get to Renown 80 on every covenant you foresee yourself swapping to for any type of content. Maybe you want to use Kyrian for PvP, Necrolord for dungeons, and Venthyr for raids. Whatever combination of covenants you might want to use, if you want to swap around a lot and still be maxed out with potential power levels, you'll want to get 80 Renown with every covenant to make sure you're not missing anything. Honestly, this is something you can sort of work on slowly, bit by bit, without a strong focus. Just know that there are quite a few things things locked behind Renown 80 that will provide some extra character power, mainly these Soulbind traits and talents and empowered conduit slots, and hey, if you get to Renown 80, you're done with that covenant on that character, so you never have to think about it again. But if you get to 80 Renown with every covenant, you can almost pretend like the system never existed in the first place. If you're curious about how to earn a lot of renown very quickly, you have a few efficient options. Obviously, that skip to 40 renown we talked about earlier is very useful for giving your other covenants or alts a big head start. After that, you can run Torghast on layer 9 for some very easy renown gains. Remember that while running Torghast, if all you care about is the renown, you can rush to the end without caring about your overall score. The renown rewards will be the same whether you take 5 minutes or 50 minutes, so always skip as much as you can. Then you also have the daily covenant callings, the covenant campaign story quests, and the various weekly quests like rescuing souls, farming anima, and grinding Corthia. All of those weekly quests reward Renown as well, so you have plenty of options for catching up to Renown 80. Something else you should get done in preparation for patch 9.2 is to level up your professions and craft the legendary items that you need to be able to craft rank 4 of legendary items that you'll want to craft in the new patch. The way legendary upgrades work in patch 9.2 is more or less the exact same as patch 9.1. You need to craft a new optional reagent which will turn a rank 4 legendary base item into a rank 7 legendary base item. That's the only way to create a rank 7 base item which will be required for every single legendary anyone wants to upgrade to the new max item level and the highest rank in patch 9.2. If you want to craft your own legendaries, you have to be able to make rank 4 legendary items and pick up the new crafting stuff in 9.2. So it's better to get the rank 4 recipes now because all of those materials are going to spike in price at the start of the patch, just like they did in 9.1. It's worth noting that you don't have to craft your own base items, you can buy and sell rank 7 base items on the auction house, but they are going to go for a massive premium at the start of the patch, especially popular legendary slots like rings and necklaces. So crafting your own could save you a lot of gold in the long run, and even make you a lot of gold if you decide to craft base items to sell. Either way, getting your professions leveled up and ready for 9.2 can only be a good thing. Personally, I made a lot of gold in 9.1 selling the higher ranks of rings and necklaces, and I plan to do the same for 9.2. I'm all ready to churn out the new rank 7 legendaries to sell for a boatload of gold on the auction house, and also for everyone in my guild who needs the upgrades. If you're interested in the new raw materials that are available in this patch, like if you want to make some gold mining or herbing or skinning to sell those raw materials, there are new ores, herbs and leathers to collect in Zerath Mortis. To maximise your gathering efficiency, you will want to make sure you have maxed gathering professions going into the patch, so that's something else to get done before 9.2 goes live. Moving on, we did mention earlier that crafting Covenant Legendaries would be a waste of time, but that's not the case for any non-Covenant Legendary that you expect to use in patch 9.2. 
With class tuning and balance changes, your best assault legendary could very well change. We also have to take the two set and four set tier bonuses into account, the double legendary situation and potential interactions, covenant ability changes and tuning. There are a lot of moving pieces here, so you could end up using different legendary effects in patch 9.2, and you might not even know it yet. But if you know which legendaries could be useful, you can create them now to save you time and effort later on. But even if you don't actually make any of the legendaries, just in case, it might still be worth farming up or saving up some Soul Ash and Soul Cinders. Right now you can endlessly farm Soul Ash and Cinders as much as you want and they're still going to be useful in the next patch. To make a fully upgraded rank 7 legendary from scratch, you are going to need 5150 Soul Ash, 1650 Soul Cinders and 2000 Cosmic Flux. That last one is a new currency coming in 9.2 so for now you can save up enough Soul Ash and Soul Cinders to make however many legendaries you might want to craft in patch 9.2 and you can get all of that farming done before the patch comes out if you don't have anything else to do. Now you may be thinking, why would I farm Torghast right now when I'll need to farm Torghast for this new currency to upgrade legendaries in 9.2 anyway? And you're not entirely wrong, but you're not entirely right either. There is a new currency that you'll need to upgrade legendaries to rank 7 in patch 9.2. That new currency can be earned in Torghast in the new higher layers coming with the patch, but the big difference this time around is that Torghast is not the only source for that currency. You can get Cosmic Flux from a wine variety variety of gameplay activities, which means this is the first patch where you can completely ignore Torghast if you do not need Soul Ash or Soul Cinders. Those are the only two currencies unique to Torghast, so it's really up to you. If you plan on running some Torghast in 9.2, which you don't have to do, you could wait until then, but if you know there are a few legendaries you will absolutely make, either because of a tier set interaction, a double legendary interaction, or maybe because you want to play a different spec in 9.2, or you just want enough currency saved up so you don't have to run Torghast. You can get some of that Torghast farming out of the way now so it doesn't interfere with your 9.2 gameplay. As a special added bonus, Soul Cinders can also be transferred across your characters in patch 9.2 so any excess Soul Cinders won't have to go to waste if you have another character to use them on. Something else I would encourage you to do before 9.2 hits is to sell your Augment runes if you still have any. Patch 9.2 will introduce an infinite Augment rune from the new Enlightened Broker faction which is obtained when you reach Exalted. With this infinite rune in play, the price of single use Augment runes is going to crash, so be sure to offload them before they become entirely worthless. And then there are a few things I'd put into a do them if you want, but don't really stress about them category. We talked a little bit about the Covenant campaign, and while it's not necessarily required for 9.2 in any way, there are some interesting rewards you might want to pick up if you missed them. The story quests reward a lot of renown, so they're useful if you still aren't caught up yet. They also reward you with Covenant themed transmog. These sets are typically really cool, and if you haven't seen them before because you're new to Shadowlands or you just skipped over the whole Covenant thing, or maybe you just stuck with one Covenant and haven't branched out yet. Whatever the reason may be, there are transmogs, pets, mounts and some other goodies that you can get from working through the Covenant campaign storylines. Another thing you can do if you really want to is upgrade your Covenant Sanctum. Now that you can freely swap between any Covenant, you have four Sanctums to upgrade. They don't offer you anything we haven't seen before and we won't be getting any new updates in 9.2, so they're there if you care, but they won't be any more relevant in 9.2, so it's just your choice. It might also be worth it to level up your followers for your mission table. Personally, I really don't care about this, but we might get some more missions for 9.2 materials that could be worth the effort if you almost have a fully leveled set of followers. There might be missions for Cosmic Flux, Cypher of the First Ones, you know, there are actually quite a lot of new currencies coming in patch 9.2 they could just throw into the mission table, so it's there if you want to. I don't really care though. Speaking of leveling though, now would also be a great time to level up any alts that you might want to play in the new patch. With so many catch-up systems in place, and many more to come later I'm sure, patch 9.2 could end up being quite alt friendly. Between no extra renown grind, plenty of ways to gear up, and obtainable tier gear for everyone, playing alts can actually be a lot of fun again. But you will need to be level 60 to take your alts into the new content, so I would get them leveled up now so you don't have to wait to enjoy the new content on them. If you're leveling through Shadowlands I would recommend using Threads of Fate, doing some bonus objectives, completing the big zone quests, maybe popping over to Torghast, 
asked for the daily quest in there, getting from 50 to 60 really doesn't take that long anymore and you have a lot of options. Then there are also a bunch of seasonal achievements that become unobtainable when the patch launches. For raiding, killing Sylvanas on Heroic will give you the Ahead of the Curve achievement for the Sanctum of Domination, and killing her on Mythic will give you the Cutting Edge achievement for this raid. Both of those achievements have time limits on them and will no longer be obtainable when the new patch launches. For Mythic Plus Dungeons, the Season 2 Keystone Mastery achievement is in the same bag. You only have until the new patch to earn this achievement, which also gives you a new colour of the Deathwalker mount. So if you want the mount or if you want the achievement, you'll need to do that before 9.2. And then the very last point I want to make in this video, it's something else that you don't want to do before patch 9.2 comes out, don't burn yourself out. I know there are some things in these lists that can take a lot of time and effort, but honestly I'd say it's way more important for you to enjoy your time in the new patch. If you're stressed and struggling and rushing to get stuff done and then the patch launches and you're just tired and frustrated with the game, well that's probably going to ruin your 9.2 experience, which will be a real shame because the patch is shaping up to be a lot of fun. So, I would recommend that you get the things that are important to you done and just don't stress about the rest. Take it easy, or even take a break from the game for a bit if you're already kind of bogged down with WoW. Take some time to recharge your WoW batteries. Personally, I'll be jumping into Lost Ark to see what that's all about. It's a different experience, it gives me some time away, and it's free to play, so there's also no investment besides time. It also looks like there's going to be quite a lot to do in patch 9.2, so if the choice is between playing a lot right before the patch or playing a lot right as the patch launches, I know what I'd rather do. New content is always the best time to play, so do what you need to do and don't burn yourself out before we get some new content to enjoy. But that's everything I think you should get done, and some things you shouldn't bother with before patch 9.2 hits live servers. What are you going to focus on? Getting characters ready for the patch, securing some of those time limited achievements, or maybe taking a break to recharge? Is there anything you would encourage players to do before 9.2 that wasn't included in this video? Leave all your thoughts in the comment section below. A big thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon and to everyone who subscribed on Twitch. You can see their names floating by on screen. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you never miss another video. Thanks for watching folks, good luck and have fun, and as always I'll see you next time.